What's poppin'? Here I am back in the closet for another voiceover. This time I will be talking about the not so well known sequel to the Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Korra. Before we start I am going to talk about spoilers so please watch the show first and then come back after you're done. If you- oh, you came back? You're done? You're done watching it now? If you're not done watching it, good luck trying to make sense of this video. <laughs> <clears throat> I originally thought that I was never going to watch this show since it was like no longer on air and everything but then I got it it got added to Netflix and here we are I'm going to be reviewing this in like parts it's all going to be the same video but it's going to be in different parts of sorts uh four mainly okay so First, we will go over characters. Of course, <laughs> we gotta talk about Korra first. I mean, that's what the show's named after. Oh, uh, as I did that, it reminded me of announcer guy, and I didn't talk about him at all, but he's definitely one of my favorite characters. We're gonna talk about Korra. At first, she was kind of like my Sokka, because I did not like her at first. At all. <laughs> like, she was super cocky, very arrogant, like, not likable at all, in my opinion, of course. I mean, people might love her. I mean, I don't know. I just didn't like her very much. But, of course, as you know, if you watch the show like I told you to do, then you will know that in Season 4, she has probably the best character arc in the show, coming back from, you know, being crippled. She went from being this super cocky and arrogant person, and by the end of the show, she was almost as mature as Tenzin. Could you believe that? The Tenzin himself? She throw she shows incredible growth throughout the series, and she did become a very good character by the end of the show. Next are the Bender Brothers. Marco- M Marco? Bola! Marco and Bolin. Especially Bolin for me. I mean, he's basically me. If he was a part of the Bender universe, dude. He's even got like a red panda as his pet, dude. I mean, this guy is a Chad. And, I mean, I didn't really like Mako's character itself. But his fight scenes were definitely the best ones in the show. I feel like most people would agree with me on that. You know, it's just... <sighs> Asami was just okay. Moving on. Next are the Beifong tw uh, Not twins. They're not twins! Lin is older! What is wrong with you, Samuel? You're messing up more with the script! The Beifong sisters are also pretty cool. I mean, there's some serious benders, dog. Like, their fight in... I think in Season 3 was pretty epic when they mental bended the entire city, basically. It was awesome. Also, I like that Kataro... Kataro? <gasps> ah! Tara, Zuko, Toph, and Iroh were also in the show, but not as, like major characters more of side characters which i liked because it's no longer their story and people were angry like they're like duh, duh, why is it was it was it a and then the soccer the shut up shut up dude it's not their story anymore their story was already told it's Korra's turn even though it might be kind of bad okay drop it <coughs> sorry you had to see that that's side of me that doesn't come out very often i also like how they were kind of guides to like Korra throughout the show like iroh is an actual guide of the spirit world oh you know? he's just kind of there man he's a pretty epic homie if he's friends with absolutely everybody that's why he is the true ultimate homie enough about this though let's talk villains <laughs> Start out with Water Guys sucked. The rest were cool though. Moving on. Just kidding. We're not moving on. We gotta talk about these people. These guys were sick. Amon is my second favorite character because he literally struck fear into all benders. Amon could take away people's bending, dude. And like, it scared the heck out of all benders. And that's never been happening before. Like, not all benders have been like super afraid of this one guy because he could take away your bending. Also, it's called energy bending, and only the Avatar has done it before, which is nuts. Unless you- actually, you could count Lion Turtle since they taught it to Aang. Oh shoot. Now I'm just thinking about the beginning episode again. Oh no. Kovira was a good villain, but I just thought she was okay as a character. She just seemed too forced as a villain, and I didn't really like her that much. I don't know. Just my opinion. 
Varric was awesome though. He was like this mad adventure, adventure that changed his ways at the end, which was awesome. Also, he has like one of my favorite catchphrases of all time. Do the thing! Hand me the thing! Bolin, do the thing. What thing? The thing! I never had to tell Julie what thing. I'm not Julie, okay? Pretend I don't know anything about anything that's happening here. That's literally my favorite line ever. I don't want to use it, but I just... I can't find the time to incorporate it in my jokes. Now, on to the big boy. Zaheer! Oh, snap, this guy is legit. Scary men. He's scary men. He's scary. How should have been to get on that? And just like how Zaheer is Nickelodeon Thanos, Korra is like watching all nine Star Wars movies in one go. You both love it and hate it. Wait, Sam, I thought you liked this show. I do. But there's also things that I really, really hate about this show. You wanna know why? I'm gonna tell you why right now! Let's start with the love triangles. Now, this is just absurd, okay? This gets really messy. First, it starts out with Korra and Bolin and Mako and Asami, then it's Korra and Mako, then it's Mako and Asami again, then back to Mako and Korra, and then finally with Korra and Asami. Wait, what? You what? Did you just say what I thought you just said, Samuel? Because I did not think you just said that. Well, I did, okay? There is indeed a LGBT couple in this show. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. Ha! <laughs> Gay! I mean, some people might. Most fans are just angry because it felt like it didn't. It came out of nowhere. Well, in my opinion, it didn't really come out of nowhere. You just had to be paying extreme attention to the show, which I did because I knew I wanted to do a video on this because, my gosh, this show. <laughs> it was subtle, but I do not think it was... I do think it was too subtle. Like, at least Nickelodeon let them put this arc in the show in the first place. I mean, it's a kid's program. Also, like, don't even get me started on that weird triangle with Chief Beifong, Tenzin, and Pema. Pema? Pema? Pema. Bam, bam, bam! <laughs> but I guess you could say that Chief Lin and Monk Boy have some sexual Tenzin. <gasps> ha! Now to the story. This is, surprisingly, where the biggest problems are. Why? Lazy writing. They pick and chose when they wanted to write and when they didn't want to. Kinda like me with online school right now. Don't tell my parents, please. Every time Korra is down, somehow she still wins no matter what. She loses her powers twice, guys. Twice! She loses her powers twice. And somehow willed them back into existence both times. Ooh, well, well, well. Like, I don't understand. She lost her powers and went into a super sacred tree and somehow became <gasps> huge. Huge, I say. Making Avatar great again. Don't get me started on season two, bro. That was just awful. Like, after watching that, I prayed. And I prayed and I said, God, please let season three be good. Didn't work. Wait, Boomy can airbend now? Come on! Oh, the season four was good, but the villains sucked, you know? I mean, like, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about Kuvira, okay? I don't know how to put it into words. I both like her and I don't. So it ended, and I felt something that I've never felt before when I stopped watching the show. I didn't want more. Which, in my opinion, is the biggest problem with the show. Like, for example, after I was done watching Avatar The Last Airbender, I immediately wanted more. I looked up the comics, I watched videos on them, I better understood the story. I was obsessed with it for like a little while and then I dropped it. You know, that's how I feel with shows after it's ended. Like even bad shows like Marvel Runaways, I was like, man, I kind of want more. That ending didn't do it for me, champ. I mean, I need, I need, I need more. I need more content, please. Give me more. And overall, yeah, I will miss the scenes. Second only to Clone Wars, baby! Oh my gosh, this show, it's like Halo in space! Wait a minute, Halo is in space. 
but it's still like Halo. It's like the Halo theme. You know, da 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 the show did not stick with one thing and stayed with it. They needed to stay with something, keep it afloat. Every season, they added a new story because they faced cancellation, which is kind of Nickelodeon's fault. It's not really theirs, but if it was all one connected story, I feel like it would be way better than what it actually was, in my opinion. By the end, it was both disappointing and good at the same time, and I don't understand it. Nickelodeon's Star Wars. Now I leave you with this. Is Avatar Korra an anime? Shout and shouts out to my homie Iro 2.0. And credits do the thing. Holy crap, it's that homie Iro! Oh my god! From the vine, falling so slow, like tiny shells drifting in the foam.